This is the third video in a series where we're making an inventory system. And to prevent this series from going on for another three or four videos, we're going to put everything into this one video with less editing. So buckle in and get ready to start. So last time, we made it so that we could pick up the objects and put them into inventory slots, but we don't allow them to stack. So the next thing we're going to do is make it so that you can pick up the items and let them stack. So in the add items section or external event, right now we're checking to see if it's equal to empty. And it would be nice to be able to just put in or as the condition to go for empty or the same name as the object you're picking up. But the or condition breaks object picking, so it wouldn't work in this case. So what we're going to do is copy the original logic and use this first one to see if you already have it in the inventory and the second one to see if there's an empty slot. So what we're going to do instead of checking if the name of the slot is empty is check to see if the name is the same as the item's object name. So the items group, the things that we're picking up off the ground, we're going to check for the object name. And this is really the only difference between the two. In this setup, if you've picked up one that you already have, it goes into that slot, changes valid space found to true, and so this one doesn't work, and it doesn't check for an empty slot. And then because the valid space was found, we update the inventory and delete the item. But now that we're adding it to a stack, instead of just setting it to a value, we're going to change the quantity to add to the item. So now when we preview the game, we have the gold bag, and when you walk into it, you get one, and if you walk into another one, you'll get two, instead of them being on two different stacks. Then, we're going to add a global variable and call it original slot number. And we're going to use this to drag and drop the inventory. And so now in the game scene, we're going to go to the inventory icon, and add the variable slot number. Because then when we're dragging this around, we can keep track of which slot it was originally from. And then we'll give it the draggable object behavior. So then in the event sheet, we'll add a section for drag and drop. So then we'll check to see if it's being dropped. So if the inventory icon was dropped, then we'll do a couple things to it. So firstly, we'll check to see if it's dropped into the game. So we're going to check to see if the cursor is not touching the inventory slot. And we can't use just an inverted condition because there are three of them, so it's not going to be touching one of the inventory slots by default. So we'll use the not condition to make sure it's not touching any of them. And then we'll create an object from its name. So we'll use the inventory icon. And for the name, we'll use the inventory icons name property. The one that we made and added to it. So we'll use the X and Y of the cursor as the place it gets dropped to. And so then we'll change the quantity variable inside of the item to equal the quantity of the inventory icon that we just dropped. And again, that's the quantity property that we made. So now when we drop it, we'll check to make sure we're not touching an inventory slot with the cursor. And then we'll create the object based on its name and give it a quantity based on the quantity of the inventory icon. So let's preview that. Pick one up, it's a one, drop it. You can see that there's two there, and I can drag it and drop it again, and drag it and drop it again, and if I pick those up, they'll get added to the inventory. But that's not what we want to have happen. What we want to happen is for the inventory icon to also get deleted, and for that amount to be actually taken out of the inventory. So what we're going to do is add another external event, call this one remove item. And then in here, we can steal these, the actions to change the variable 
based on the slot number. But since there's no local slot number variable, we're going to use the original slot number, the global variable that we created earlier. We'll set the quantity to zero. And the name back to empty. And then we'll change the need inventory update variable to true so that it updates the inventory. Now in the event sheet, after we've dropped the object, we're going to add link to external events and remove item. There we go. But because we're using that original slot number variable, we also need to add another event to check if the inventory icon is being dragged. And if it is, we'll change the variable original slot to equal the inventory icon's slot number. So when you pick it up to drag it, you'll be using the slot number inside the object, but we haven't yet set this number. So when we update the inventory and create the object inside the inventory slot, we're going to change the variable slot number to equal slot number. So when we create the object using the slot number to cycle through the slots, we'll change the variable number to equal the slot number it was just created with. So then in the event sheet, when we drag it, we can set the original slot number as a variable outside of the object in order to know where it was originally from. So now, after all of that, if we preview the game, pick up the object, take it and drop it, the inventory was updated, which means that it was deleted when the inventory updated. So now there's two inside of that object. So when I pick it up, I apparently made a mistake in the uh, video. Apologies for that. This should be items. Among objects items, so the items group, create an object named inventory icon name. So using the name saved inside the inventory icon, we create an object from the items group, which are these three. So now, after all of that, if we preview the game, when I pick up a gold bag and drop it on the ground, it creates one of those objects. It's again one. If I pick up another one, it'll be two. If I drop that, now this has two in it. If I pick up this one, it's one. And if I pick up this, it will be three. And I can do that with all the objects. And now the last thing we need to do is set it up so that we can move things around in the inventory. So we'll create another event, make it a sub event of was dropped. So it's another thing we're going to check when we drop the object. Call this one dropped into inventory slot. And to make sure that the inventory update is happening at the end of the event sheet, I'm going to move this event down below it. That way all of these changes will happen, and this will be the last thing it does. So now, if we drop the object, and our cursor is touching an inventory slot, then we'll create another external event. And this one will be called Move Inventory Icon. And before we begin this one, We'll just link it here as well. Now move inventory icon. So what we're going to do first is just move it to an empty slot. So we'll go back to the add item external event, steal these two again, and we're going to change the inventory slots number based on the inventory slot in the game. So when we go to drop the object into a new slot, we'll use that slots number to know where we're dropping it in our structure.
And what we'll set that to is the inventory original slot number's name. So when we pick up the object, we'll get the original slot number saved separately, and we'll use that slot number to know what we're moving over to the next one. So we'll do the same thing for the second one, but this will be quantity instead of the name. And then at the end of this sheet, we'll set need inventory update to true in order to update the inventory. And I think if we did just this part and previewed it, we'd get that. But if I drag this into another slot, we'll duplicate it. So right now we're just adding the information from one slot to the next, but not removing this slot or swapping them. We'll copy these events, make this one for the old slot, make this one for the new slot, If we set the name to empty and the quantity to zero, and instead of the new slot number, we use the original slot number, and then we made sure that these are set to set to because we're not adding to or swapping to it. So then if we preview the game now, pick up some gold drag it from one slot to the next, the first slot will be set to empty and zero. So we can drag them back and forth between slots or drop them on the ground and pick it back up. And there we go. Now, the last thing to do is make it so that we can swap between two different slots that already have things in them. And to do that, we need to hold on to the one being swapped to and keep it separately. So we'll create some local variables because we're only going to do it right here and call it original name and original quantity. Original name will be a text and original quantity will be a number. And so we'll copy those two events again. And change the original name to the original slot number name. And the original quantity to the original slot number quantity. Whoops, I have these backwards. What we're going to do is save the values of the original slot here separately and give the old slot information from the new slot. So whether it's empty or if there's something there, we're going to take that information and put it in the old slot. And now this separately saved information will go into the new slot. So we'll set this to equal the original name and the original quantity. And there we go. Now we preview the game. This should work. Let's get two separate ones. We have one and two. Can drag them around. And if we grab one and put it into the same slot as another one, it'll switch. But even with an empty slot, it's still switching the information. It's just switching empty and zero instead of gold and one. Now, you can expand on this inventory system as much as you want to. If you go into the add item section, you can check not only if a slot has the same name, but you could also check to see if that inventory slot has a certain number. So if you want them to stack until 10, you just add a condition to check if the inventory slots quantity as a number is less than four is less than or equal to four. And we'll set that as the cap. So we'll check this, and if it's less than or equal to 4, then it will add it to this stack. But otherwise, it'll go here. So let's try that out. So now we have 5. If we pick up more, it'll go to the next slot. 
and they'll also swap like before. But if you understand how this works, you can tweak it to fit basically any kind of game that you want. But ideally, this will be used for something like Stardew Valley. But remember, if this inventory system doesn't work for the kind of game that you are building, there are some extensions that you could use that might work for you instead. 